Meet me. Welcome back, boys. So, I finally did it. Uh, you guys know how I feel about PvE and grinding and stuff, but it was time to take it to the next level. So today we're going to talk about how to build a Wyvern one-shot team. Now this is a very meta team. All the people running um, Wyvern one-shot teams have some variation of this. But just in case you have never seen it before, which would be unusual, we'll just do a single run first and we'll time it so that you can see how fast this run really is. And then we'll go over the logistics of it, gear requirements, things like that. So the team is Sinful Angelica, SSB, Karen, and Sigrid. Um, as far as I know, the only, like, you can probably replace certain heroes in this comp. Like, I think some people use haste instead of SSB, but I think very few people have haste built. So, if you want to replace some of these heroes, it's fine, but Sinful Angie and, um, Sigrid are probably mandatory. Karen, maybe you could replace with another Deathbreaker, but, um, this is probably the easiest team you can come up with. So here we go. This is the biggest part. If that defense break doesn't land, this team falls apart, so you will lose 15% of the time. But other than that, it's uh, pretty cut and dry. So there we go. You get that big damage from Sigrid. And then Sigrid goes straight into the S3. And based on my timer here, that was a 1 minute and 6 second run. So that's how the team works. Let's go into requirements. All right, now that you've seen the team in action, as always, my guides are separated into subjects. So this is how I'm going to do it. Topics one through four will be a discussion of each individual hero, and I'm going to order it in how easy it is to build them. So easiest to hardest. So topic number one will be Karen. Topic number two will be Sinful Angie. Topic number three will be Sigrid. And topic number four will be SSP. She's the hardest to build by far. Topic number five will be an explanation of the speed tuning. And topic number six will be a quick discussion on whether it's worth it to try and build this team. So let's get started. So let's start with topic number one, Karen. Very, very easy to gear. You should be able to just put throwaway gear on her. You will notice that she is level 58, not fully awakened, and has zero molas in her S2 and S3 and I one-shotted it just fine. You'll also notice that most of the gear is not reforged and it's free PvP gear, nothing special. Gear requirements, you're gonna want around 160 speed and uh, don't go overboard. Like when I say these stats, you want exactly these stats when it comes to speed and we'll discuss that more in topic number five, but don't go over 160 speed. So you want around 160 speed, 65 effectiveness at least. You're gonna want her on Daydream Joker and that's it. The other stats don't matter. So for all the other stats, dump as much into crit damage as possible to take advantage of the DDJ. And if you're struggling to get SSB and Sigrid geared enough to one-shot the Wyvern, then you might debate putting Molas into S2 and S3 because every little bit of damage that Karen puts on the Wyvern is damage that Sigrid and SSB don't. So if you can't one-shot it right away, try beefing up the Karen a little bit with Molas, and you should be able to do it. You're going to notice that I got away with using absolutely zero Molas on Karen. So if you're trying to save Molas, don't even bother. You don't need to as long as your gear is good enough on your Sigrid and SSB. And that's all there is to say for Karen. Very easy to build. The key is 160 speed, 65 effectiveness, and then the rest, as many offensive stats as you could get with your gear. Topic number two is Sinful Angelica. Also very easy to gear, but there is a caveat. Because some of you guys might throw away your effect resist gear. Those people will regret that, because for this build to work, you need at least 200 effect resist. Otherwise, Wyvern will just strip her and kill her instantly, and then the team doesn't work. You need to make sure her immortality doesn't get stripped. Other than that, extremely easy to build, because none of her other stats matter at all. Speed, you're going to want her exactly around 200, not much higher, not much lower. We'll talk about that again more in topic number five. But those are her only requirements. Again, easy to build. 200 effect resist, 200 speed, everything else is a dud. 
artifact. I think this is the best one. If you don't have it, I think there's another event artifact that gives attack. This one's good because it also gives effectiveness as well. I think this is best in slot for this run because you really need high attack on your Sigurd and SSP. And again, when it comes to Molas, you don't need any. I have mine at Friendship 10, so I did Mola the uh, S3 and 2 into the S1, but completely irrelevant. You don't need it at all, so you can absolutely run her with no Molas. And if you build her for a hunt team, she's going to be Friendship 10 eventually anyway, so it doesn't matter. So again, as you can see, she's not fully awakened. Very easy to build. Now, topic number three is Sigrid, and this is where it gets kind of hard. So... These are my Sigrid stats, and again, you don't. I don't have any Molas into her S2. I mean, uh, I don't have any imprints. I do have. I have her max Mola, so I don't have any imprints on her. Uh, Molas, I have her fully Molad because I was using her with a general Purgis Wyvern team before. For a one-shot team, she will never S2, so you don't have to Mola her S2, but you will have to max Mola her S1 and her S3. So. It's a pretty significant investment, but it's worth it. Now, if you go for a one-shot team right off the bat, then you can save all the Molas into her S2 if you don't intend to use her in any other content. And for me, I don't ever use her for anything but Wyvern. But with General Purgis, you need a DS2 because she would use it on her AI. So basically, you need her at plus 10. Exclusive Artifact, you're going to want her on the S1 exclusive artifact if you're running her for this one-shot team, because again, she doesn't S2. When I used her with General Purgis, I used the uh, S2 one. But yeah, just basically use the S1 one because it's triggered by Sinful Angelica's dual attack. Uh, artifact, no-brainer. You're going to want a plus 30 DDJ. There's no other option. Now, for a one-shot, a true one-shot, I could not get it to work with anything but a rage set. Um, I just crafted this for this team. This is pretty junky. If I get a uh, modify, I will change this health to attack percent. But this was literally the only rage set. Um, like I'll show you right now, I don't have much rage set gear. So if you don't have a lot of rage sets, straight up a one shot might not be possible. Like you could see for armor, I literally don't have any or boots. So I barely was able to make this work. So if you don't have rage sets, you can still get away with Destruction set, I found, but I cannot one-shot the Wyvern. What does seem to happen, though, is I get the Wyvern to, like, 10%, and then SSB will finish it off with an S2 counter or something. So it works, but it doesn't become a true one-shot without the Rage set, at least for me. Maybe if you have super, super sick, nasty Destruction gear, like... 5k attack 350 crit damage you can still pull it off but it'll be close with rage set it lowers your stat requirements significantly so i would say that as long as you get around 4200 attack and 30 320 crit damage you should be okay obviously more is better um, and i would prioritize crit damage over attack once you start capping out because the ddj gets a lot of bonus from the crit damage, um, but around 4200 attack, 320 crit damage is right around the cusp of when you'll be able to start one-shotting the Wyvern. Um, just to check out the gear, most of it isn't that crazy. The amulet's pretty crappy, to be honest. Um, this ring is solid. Um, this has some rolls and effect resist. Uh, this is pretty good, but speed set, or she's off speed set. Ideally, if I could get her a hit um, set chest, with high crit damage, that would be ideal because her effectiveness is a little low. And when she lands the bleeds from the Sinful Angelica S1 dual attack, it really does secure that one shot. So Sigrid, pretty hard to build, uh, mainly because of the rage set requirement. But again, you can make it work without rage set, but you won't kill the Wyvern in one shot with the S3, which will add around another 15 to 20 seconds to your run but still significantly faster than any other team you could build. So you can start her on a destruction set. I experimented with this so I know that it works because I didn't have a rage set until I built this, at least four pieces. So you can do it, but you won't one-shot the Wyvern. Just keep that in mind, but you can use that until you finish a rage set. All right, so the hardest one to build I found was this. So topic number four is SSB. So the one 
crappy part about this is I love using SSB in um, PvP. And with this build, effectively, you can't. So SSB, you're going to need to have her at plus 15 for this to work. At a bare minimum, you're going to need to S2 and S3 max Molad because you need to clear that first wave, and it's pretty hard to do it. So um, offensive stat-wise, you're going to need around, like, 41 to 4200 attack. Like, if you have a plus 30 Rheingars, um, it helps a lot, too, because you need that extra damage proc. If you don't have a plus 30 Rheingars, you might want to consider using something like Portrait or that event artifact that does the uh, extra AoE damage. But that might increase the stat requirements if you don't have a plus 30 Rheingars. And if you don't have a plus 30 Rheingars, um, it's going to be pretty inconsistent because if the extra damage doesn't proc, you'll probably fail to uh, one-shot the first wave and it will screw up the rotation. So the speed, you need around 180 speed, uh, around, you don't need too much crit chance because Karen has a uh, crit imprint, um, and if you're still struggling, you could put like a, a support artifact maybe on sinful instead of the attack artifact, but you're going to want around 65%, whatever you need to get 100% crit, uh, obviously on fire units based on your imprints and other situations, you're going to want at least like 310 critical hit damage. So these stats are pretty bulky offensively, so they're not too easy to get. I had to put some of like my best uh, DPS gear on her to make this work. So I had to strip a lot of my units. Like you can see that this is a pretty damn good piece. So a lot of these pieces are pretty damn solid and you're gonna need every bit of damage to make this work. Like this is arguably the worst piece, um, but yeah. Around 41 to 4300 attack and at a bare minimum 310 crit damage. And you're going to need uh, about 10 less speed than whatever your Sinful Angelica is. So there you go. Those are all of my unit stats and what the gear requirements are. Now let's talk about the speed tuning. So, all right. So if you were paying attention in that um, character build section... Uh, I was very specific about what speeds that you need your units to be at. And we're, let's go over the turn order that your team has to get to 100% of the time for this team to work consistently. So let's watch that original video again. So for the first wave, the turn order has to be this. Sinful Angie goes first, then SSB goes, but before any of the enemy mobs so that she gets the S3 off. And then the two mobs have to go before Karen. If Karen cuts them, then you lose because Karen won't defense break the Wyvern. So you must be speed tuned for this scenario to happen every single time. And for that first wave, there should be no RNG. You should 100% clear it. Now the second wave, uh, Karen will have the speed buff, but she has to be tuned so that she goes before Sinful Angelica because you need Sinful Angelica to go after the Karen so that she brings Sigrid when the defense break is up. Otherwise, you don't have enough damage. That's why you need Karen at just around 160, because with the speed buff, she'll outspeed Sinful for the second wave. Otherwise, sometimes if you mess it up, Sinful will go um, uh, before the Karen does. I can't talk right now. So the speed is very important here. So going back to the character stats, that's why they're built this way. Um, if you make Sinful too fast, then she will go before the Karen every time. So you want her right around 200. You want my uh, level 58 Karen to be around just around 40 speed below her, but it needs to be around 160. So that's slower than two mobs, but fast enough to cut Sinful with the speed buff. Um, SSB you need right around 180. I think mine's a little faster than it needs to be. Uh, 180 should be fine to go in front of those two fire mobs. And Sigrid, her speed absolutely doesn't matter. Um, you could see mine only has 118 speed. Doesn't matter at all with the speed buff. She'll still go before the Wyvern second turn. So her speed, you should be completely fine. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the next topic. All right, so topic number six, uh, some closing statements and is it worth it? So I'm going to go through kind of an overview of how I feel about this one-shot team. So um, 
The first problem with this one-shot team is SSB. Now, these three heroes I didn't care about, but SSB, I love using SSB in PvP. If you guys watch my Guild Wars and RTA videos, you guys know that. But this build does not work for PvP, unless you're going to try to cleave with her or something. It's just way too squishy. So basically, it means that I can't use her in anything but Wyvern anymore, which was a big part of why I opted to go with the G-Purge team last season. But um, this season I'm trying to grind out more gear, so basically my plan is to use SSB for nothing but hunts, and in like the last two weeks of RTA, I'll switch her back to PvP gear. But basically I'm losing her for the entire season. Some players who are Turbo Whales actually build 2 plus 15 SSBs for that reason, I'm not going to freaking do that. If you have the resources to do that, best of luck to you, but I can't do that. Uh, the second problem, obviously, is some people might not have the gear to do it, but if that's the case, um, you know, you just have to grind. Um, and the third problem, it's not really a problem, but just one thing to note is that there's three outcomes to uh, this team. One is the super efficient run you saw, in which case it'll take around a minute and five seconds. The second case is all your debuffs except defense break gets resisted and Sigrid doesn't one-shot. That's not really a problem, but it'll add about 15 to 20 seconds to your run, but it'll still work. The third case is the defense break gets resisted, in which case you just lose and waste your time. But that's not unusual. That could happen to any auto wyvern hunt team. Um, and the good thing about this team is that it fails fast. But expect to lose 15% of your... Uh, rounds because this team has no wiggle room. If death break gets resisted, you lose. Some tankier teams might be able to survive some RNG. This is not one of them. Now let's talk about is it worth it? And uh, that will depend on your situation. It was worth it for me because they're just coming out with so many new heroes and I just never have enough gear. And it's really neutering me in terms of my ability to compete with top players in RTA. Last season, I was around top 300, but once I burst some of these top players, like, I was just clearly outclassed, so I'm trying to do my best, and if you saw my April Fool's video, that's a big part of why I just bought all those bookmarks, because now I'm set with bookmarks for the rest of, like, the next six months. So basically, I'm just going to blow all my Sky Stones on hunts, but one thing you have to note is Hunt 13 takes 22 energy. Why do I point that out? In an ideal situation, a run takes around one minute. Really, it's going to be like one minute and 30 seconds because of the bad runs plus lag loading into the next fight. Let's just say one minute, right? So 60 runs per hour times 22 energy is 1,320 energy. Let's say you ran this for 12 hours straight, half a day. That's 16,000 energy. Is there anyone here that can reasonably get 16,000 energy per day? No. No. Like, you'd have to buy out the pack store with everything to have that many Sky Stones to have 16,000 energy per day. So, for most of the time, it's not worth it. But there's one exception, right? You see these event buttons. Every once in a while, there's a hunt event. Right now, it's Spirit Altar event. When it's a hunt event, you get that juicy 30% gold buff plus the double whatever hunt crafting materials drop buff. That's the case where you want to be super efficient, want to blow all your energy as quickly as possible. I told you this if you watch one of my old progression guides. So you really want at least one hunt team. I've mentioned this before, but it doesn't have to be Wyvern. Out of the other all the one-shot hunt teams, Wyvern is probably the hardest one to build. So build a Banshee one-shot team, build a A13 one-shot team. As long as you have one, like some people have one-shot teams for every hunt, I don't think there's any reason to do that because you can't be grinding all four hunts simultaneous, simultaneously and you're never going to have enough energy to be grinding them all day for the other hunts. So I would always recommend just building one one-shot hunt team that's around one minute. And for all the other hunts, if it takes two minutes, three minutes, who gives a crap? Just click it on and walk away. You're going to run out of energy long before you run out of time. So um, my conclusion is if it's worth it is, uh, yeah, during the hunt events, it's worth it. But as long as you have something to hunt, 
build a one-shot team like except golem because golem gear isn't really used but banshee a13 um, if you have those one-shot teams already you can probably just skip building the wyvern hunt team if you don't have any of these units built already again you don't need one-shot teams for every hunt so that's just my opinion on it obviously i went with wyvern because i'm always stressed trying to get speed gear but uh, your mileage may vary. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide video. I hope it helped you out. And for those of you who do pursue a Wyvern one-shot team, best of luck to you. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe for more guide videos. Till next time, boys. Peace out.